Okay. So hello everyone. So we have very exciting webinar today. It is joint webinar with the uh, Mentor Hub and Northeastern Illinois University. And Dr. Oluk Beknor Muhammadov kindly agreed to talk about how to write a book review in, um, in the area of TESOL and applied linguistics. Um, he, in one of his previous webinars that he did it for us, he mentioned that this is the one of the uh, easier pathways into coming into this publishing domain. So, and I think um, there were lots of interest um, how to do this, how we can be able to do that. So thank you so much uh, for everyone joining us and thank you, uh, Dr. Olovic uh, for agreeing to do this for us. And yeah, mm -hmm. without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Nodropa. So um, I actually refer to uh, no, uh, Dr. Nodra as Nodra is Nodra. Nodra means like name, her name, right? Uh, Opa means like older sister. So thank you so much. So I will use this interchangeably, right? So um, thank you so much, first of all, and assalamu alaikum if you're watching us from Uzbekistan. Um, and I know that it's evening over there, so good evening. And if you're following us in North America or Canada, uh, good morning, right? If you are somewhere else in, in, in the home called, so-called the earth, um, so the meeting is being recorded, continue, okay. So, uh, you know, if you're following us in different parts of the world, and so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So um, thank you so much for joining this webinar called How to Write a Book Review and Test and Applied Linguistics. So as, as Nodrapa mentioned, so I'm very grateful, um, you know, to um, present here uh, on behalf of MentorHub, also Northeastern Illinois University. So uh, MentorHub, as Nodrapa mentioned, is a social media uh, group. Um, um, uh, uh, which is maintained and founded by Nodropa, uh, primarily for uh, English language teachers uh, in Uzbekistan, but also there are lots of followers that are what, like, correct me if I'm wrong, 1,500 followers already, right? So, you know, talking about the issues related to ELT. And I'm uh, also very grateful that, uh, you know, there are some colleagues from Northeastern Illinois University's TESOL program, as well as students, right, who are following us uh, here. So thank you so much. So it's such a beautiful thing, you know, such a beautiful thing where like uh, people all over the world are joining and discussing an issue uh, to make a difference in the world. So welcome again to how to write a book review in TESOL and applied linguistics. Um, so um, we decided to do this webinar for a number of reasons. And one of them is not that I mentioned, as you can see this poster, right, from March 25th. So how to publish in academic journals. I mean, I actually gave a webinar to MentorHub um, colleagues. And, and then, um, you know, I was, I was just talking about, like, you know, how they can publish uh, their papers in academic journals, you know. And at, at some point, I said, well, I mean, you can also write book reviews. And, and some people were actually surprised by this statement because they didn't know that, you know, publishing a book review was also a possibility. In other words, uh, publishing a book review by graduate students, whether PhD, MA, or interested teachers is a common practice in the United States. I mean, that's how I started my own publishing experience. And so that was something interesting. And a lot of people actually uh, showed an interest um, in, in, in learning how to write book reviews. And since then, right, March, Nodropa and I briefly discussed about it, you know, discussed this in April, May, and June. We're like, okay, let's do that. And July, oh, how about, you know, when we talk about it later? And then, uh, because I was, uh, I'm currently teaching a course called TESOL 409, Research Methods and Design to TESOL um, students at Northeastern Illinois University's TESOL program. In fact, Sarah is here and Anne is here, um, yeah, you know, the students who are taking my course. Writing a book review is one of the major assignments in the Research Methods and Design course in my current um, university. Okay, so that's, we, we thought maybe we should, we should also invite colleagues in Uzbekistan and and, and the United States and also give this webinar. So if you haven't watched how to publish in academic journals, um, please um, go to MentorHub's uh, YouTube channel and take a look at it. But just to let you know, it's in Uzbek. So either you have to learn Uzbek and then watch it, or you have to brush upon your Uzbek while watching it. <laughs> so anyway, so that was one of the motivations to do this. And, you know, let's, let's just face it, right? I mean, book, book reviews, right? They're very common. In fact, uh, you know, when I proposed the topic to Nodropa, I said, 
let's just call it how to write a book review. Then another got back to me and said, oh, but book review in what, right? There are lots of reviews, right? I mean, if you go to Amazon, right, you will see reviews, right? We look for stars, right? I mean, even our eight-year-old knows, like, you know, how many stars does that toy have? You know, I want to buy a Lego. Does it have two stars or five stars, right? Even the kids know that, right? So we're living in the, in the time when we need immediate feedback and we have to see, right, whether it's Yelp or Amazon. So first of all, right, wh why do we need to, to, to read reviews? Right. I mean, first of all, we teachers are interested what kind of books or which books we want to use in our teaching. Right. So, you know, do we, do we want to use a book from Macmillan or Oxford? Both are wonderful books. Oh, OK, let's let's read the reviews. Right. You know, which of these books are uh, really good, um, you know, for my teaching context or researchers. Right. We researchers read books. Right. I mean, I have a bookshelf here. Right. I want to know about the vocabulary. I want to know about um, how to do quantitative um, um, studies, right? Or I really want to do how to uh, do um, interviews properly, right? In, in my research paper. So we read books, um, you know, research-based books, right? And we want to see the reviews and read the reviews, right? To get some ideas. And also administrators, right? Maybe administrators want to use um, a laptop, right? What kind of laptop is a PC? Is it a Mac? Maybe they want, they want to use iPad. Should it be Apple products? Should it be Samsung, right? Or apps? What kind of apps do we need to use? Or YouTube channels, right? So different people, you know, um, uh, write reviews for different reasons. So they are very common, right? But, uh, you know, before I tell you how you can publish your book reviews, let me just briefly tell you how I started my book review um, experience, okay? So um, you see this handsome gentleman on the screen. So his name is Randall Sadler. He's an associate professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, um, I met Randall Sadler, oh, I, I call him Randy. For many years, I called him Dr. Sadler. Then he insisted that I call him Randy after I got my PhD. So, right, right. Um, in in 2004, I started my MA TESOL program at the University of Illinois Champaign Urbana. And sometime uh, in summer of 2005, Randy emailed the lister and and encouraged. Um, uh, everyone to do a book review. He basically said, hey, I am uh, a book review editor in the journal called The Reading Matrix. So it's here. Uh, it's an online journal. And so I have a couple of books, okay? And if you guys want to publish your book reviews in the journal, you know, contact me and I'll be very happy to, you know, navigate you through how you can publish your book reviews. And, you know, and, and also he mentioned that book reviews is a great pathway to academic um, publishing experience. And also, you know, book reviews look great in your CV, right? Especially like, you know, usually when you apply for a CV or a research grant, people wanna see in the committee, you know, whether you have an ability to do research or not, right? So um, that idea, that invitation was very intriguing. And I ended up contacting Randy and, and he invited me to his office and I saw a couple of textbooks there. And I really liked this book, Teaching English to the World, History, Curriculum and Practice. It was an edited volume. So basically, the, the, the book was reader friendly, and the and the book was um, uh, book contained um, information how English uh, was taught in many different parts of the world, including Middle East, North America, and and also Asia. And so um, I, I liked it, and I read the book, and I wrote the review, and the, I sent my first draft to Randy. Randy looked at it and gave me comments and asked me to revise. I revised my paper. I sent the you know my draft back to Randy again. Remember, this is the second time, right? Second draft. He looked at it again and he gave me comments and I revised it again, probably three or four times, you know, um, I had to revise the book review. And so, you know, I actually put here hand holding. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened. He actually supervised me. He showed me how to write a book review. Then my book review was published uh, in the Reading Matrix Journal, okay? And I really loved it because, that, first of all, that was a very good experience, right? And, um, and my book review actually appeared in the uh, Reading Matrix in 2005. And since then, I wrote book reviews for the following books. As you can see, uh, Macmillan Collocations Dictionary and Cambridge Learners Dictionary and a couple of uh, books related to SLA and also one book in technology. Just to let you know that one beautiful thing about book reviews are that you can actually get these books for free from the publisher. So that's a good thing. And you can keep them, okay? You either get the books from the publishers or from, from journal editors. And, and so that, that, that was a great thing to do. And so, well, my book reviews between 2005 and 2013. 
So these are the books that I've published. And, and so the process of publishing a book review actually becomes easier with each review a, a person has published. So as you can see, right, these are in reverse chronological order. So these are the book reviews I published. And here's the thing, right? I mean, before I applied for my PhD, right, I listed them under the publication section or resume, right? That's why you need to publish book reviews. And if you are following us in Uzbekistan, I know that Scopus is a is a is a sort of key word right now, right, in the Uzbekistan uh, education system. Um, so these these highlighted journals have all have all been listed um, um, under the index. So in other words, they're Scopus index journal. So you can still publish your book reviews in the Scopus index journal. And this, I think, book reviews, uh, as, as Nodar mentioned, is a pathway to initial steps in publishing, right? Like maybe not everybody's familiar with the way book um, articles are published uh, in the US, UK or Canada, right? For example, I don't know how I can publish my articles in Uzbekistan because I'm not familiar. Uh, but I think as to, to the best of my understanding is that in Uzbekistan and many parts of the world, there is sort of a great emphasis on publishing your papers in US, UK or um, Canada-based journals. So if you're In the United States, uh, you know, there's a great way to, to, to start the process. Or uh, if you have never talked to the editor, that's one way. If you have never received uh, comments from the um, reviewers, I mean, that's another way to get to know um, how much time it takes to get your paper or, you know, how you can engage yourself with actually editorial board of a journal. So that's what I've learned personally, du you know, during that time. And, and also, um, you know, in our uh, Northeastern Illinois University's TESOL programs, sometimes we assign our students to write a book review because it's a great way to be engaged in the professional development opportunities. Like for example, I'm currently teaching TESOL 409, a research methods and design course to graduate level MA TESOL students. And, you know, I'm, I actually ask them to find a book or, or a website and, and review that from the uh, uh, language perspective. Or sometimes when I teach assessment courses, I actually have my students uh, analyze uh, published books from the uh, assessment or testing perspectives. And these two books, for example, the 21st Century uh, Communication by Sengage, uh, National Geographic, was published by our former student, Joe Bastian, in the TESOL journal, which is a prestigious journal among teachers. And this task-based language teaching was actually published by Janine Coughlin, um, she didn't do it in my class. She did in one of my colleagues' class, I think either Janine's class or Teddy's class, one of my colleagues' class, and published it in the local uh, Illinois TESOL newsletter, okay? And we usually uh, update our students and encourage our students to, to get their book reviews published or articles published, and we announce them in our Facebook uh, so that others could see uh, and others could see the comments and reviews about this book, okay? So now, um, agenda for today. This was just an introduction. No wonder why we are language people, right? We talk a lot. So um, agenda for today. Um, I want to talk about three half -tunes. Okay, I was so inspired by Scott Thurnberry's presentation, so I decided to call it half -tunes. So um, have to find materials, have to select journals, and have to write book reviews. Please note, I use materials and books interchangeably. So I can also say material review, I can also say book review, because please note, right, in our field nowadays, um, uh, we, we, are, we are encouraged to use technology, right? And in fact, there is a field um, which cater for specialized audience called computer assisted language learning or language learning and technology journals that frequently uh, publish reviews of apps, application, language applications, websites that tailor for um, um, language learning or you know, books, okay? So I will use material review, books review interchangeably. So if you're interested in technology, then probably you want to find an app or website or a book that's specialized in technology and review it for that specific journal. Okay, so let me start with materials. So how you have to find materials, right? Whether it's a book, an application, or website, or a YouTube channel, right? I mean, one way to do that would be you can buy a book for yourself and review it for a journal. I mean, that, that you know, that, that, that's a common way, right? But the material books must be recent. Okay, like for example, I really wanted to publish a book, uh, publish a book review, and I contacted a person. I said, "Hey, the book that I want to pub, uh, write a review for your journal, uh, 
has been published in 2018. Is it okay? And the person say yes. Usually it has to be recent, you know, either two years old or a year old or, you know, published that year. Okay. So that's one way you can do it. But of course, if you have money, right? But as Dr. Anton Sadler always said, free is good. So sometimes maybe we have to look for ways to get it for free. So you can also reach out to the review editor of a particular journal. So just to let you know that um, if you go to the journal's website, usually you, you, you should find a tab, a section that's called editorial board. Okay, then an editorial board of a journal. So there you will see the editor and the reviewers. And usually there is one person who is particularly responsible, specifically responsible for um, editing, uh, reviewing a book. So their title, their title is a book review editor. Okay, so you can just reach out to that person and say, um, you know, my name is so and so. I am a graduate student so and so place, or I am a teacher, and I'm I'm really interested in publishing a you know, book review in your journal. And here is my interest. Okay, you can attach your CV, or they will request your CV, and and they can send you um, the books that they have. Or sometimes what happens is that they will, the book review editors of a journal, will reach out to the publisher, whether it's Macmillan University Press, you know, uh, Macmillan, or whether it's Oxford University Press, Cambridge, or Routledge. Okay, they have a list of um, publishers, companies. And so the editors will reach out to those publishers and will get the book shipped to your address. You know, whether it's Oh, look, Becky, you're muted. ...has an office in the U.S. Then, can you hear me now, Dr. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. Can you speak up or make uh, a bit louder? Oh, you want me to speak louder? Yeah, now it just kind of changed. Yeah. Um, yep. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Just a second. Let me, let me see. Um, uh, let me see, maybe... Uh, just a second. Now seems okay, yeah. Okay, so um, I mean, yeah, now it seems okay. This this thingy maybe it got got disconnected somehow. Ah, uh, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Then um, someone or sometimes what happens is that someone will recommend you to the editor. Okay. So. Uh, uh, or if you're an experienced editor, uh, like a book review editor, I mean, book review editors may even look for you, okay? So here, um, have to find materials. Here, I, I uh, made a list of companies that publish ELT textbooks, okay? It's available in um, Google, um, Google um, Docs. So, Nodrapa, uh, I will send you the link. So if you're a mentor hub, um, member, you should be able to have access to these after the presentation is done. So, uh, or when the, uh, this webinar is uploaded on YouTube, uh, we'll make sure to include these um, right um, under the description, okay? So look, look at some of them. So uh, you can actually take a look at them. And most of these um, publishing companies like Cambridge University Press, Oxford University Press, Paul Greg Macmillan, they have like ELT, right? ELT really means English language teaching, language and linguistics sections or ELT adult and higher education. So when you click, you'll be directly taken to the, uh, to the website where they have the list of recently published books. So you can actually um, find um, a book that is of your interest. And if you have, and you can also look at the table of contents, right? Uh, usually uh, what these phenomenal publishing companies do is that they sometimes upload a chapter, right? Or sample uh, from their product. Right, uh, and and so they post them on, on on their website. So you can actually, you know, take a look at them, and and go from there. Okay, and so when you when you for example email the journal editor, you can send the link um, from these uh, companies and say, uh, dear sir or madam, I'm specifically interested in reviewing this journal or uh, this book or or this app or this website. Okay. So it's going to make the life easier rather than sending them and say, hey, uh, the editor, I'm really interested in reviewing a book. Uh, and if you have books, let me know, right? You can also be specific. I'm interested in reviewing this book from this company. And here is the link, right? So please let me know uh, if, if, um, if you can give me that opportunity or something like this, okay? So yes, so take a look at the list of publishers. Um, 
Okie doc. Yeah, there are so many publishers, right? So many publishers. And, and, and just note, um, my colleagues who are following me, uh, just, they might also say no. They might say, no, you know, we cannot send it to you. So, but if you contact them through the uh, journal book review editor, then book review editor will contact them on behalf of you. Okay, so that that's usually the safe way to get the, and probably the proper way of also getting the um, the book you wanted to review and publish it. Now, how to select journals, right? There are lots of journals, right? So every time I talk to my colleagues in Uzbekistan, the first first question they ask me is that, is it scopes indexed or not? Right? It, it, it's a fair question, right? While in the United States. Um, especially in the area of TESOL and applied linguistics, there are certain journals, they have their prestige, you know, like for example, it's my dream to publish in TESOL quarterly and applied linguistics. Why? Because uh, it's such a, these, are, these two journals are such prestigious journals in the area of TESOL and applied linguistics, okay? I don't know their index score in Scopus, but, you know, among my professors and colleagues, these are um, highly prestigious journals. And please note, right, Book reviews appear in most journals, in most journals. And here you can see general, right? Some of the journals, just general focus journals like ELT journal, the Asian EFL journal, TESOL EJ journal, right? Electronic journal, this one. And they are all scopes indexed, okay? Um, and, but there are also journals which um, cater for specialized audience, right? Language learning and technology. They're interested in publishing technology related books, okay, articles, English for specific purposes, right? I know that ESP is, is, um, is um, uh, important and popular topic in many parts of the world, right? So, you know, how to teach chemistry, how to teach physics, right, to specialize um, students, right, or engineering, right? So there is this journal, Language Assessment Quarterly, right? If you're interested in assessment, right? So there is this, um, for example, uh, journal. So it really depends. And there are lots of journals. And um, someone, uh, I think in the TESOL um, uh, in international office put together a list of journals, okay, and updated it uh, in 2017. And it looks like this. Um, just to let you know that these resources will be um, provided and um, we'll also, uh, I will share the link uh, to my Google folder where you will have access to all of this information, okay. Um, whether you are following us on YouTube or somewhere else. So this will be uploaded on our YouTube. Um, and I will also share with my students at the Northeastern Illinois University. Now take a look at it, right? Applied Linguistics Journal. So take a look at it, right? Maybe Applied Linguistics Journal um, publishes reviews, book reviews. So you might want to contact the book review editor. There is Applied Linguistics Review Journal, right? Pay attention, you know, go to the website and take a look at it. Maybe they have they, they want uh, book reviews to be published, right? Contact the book review editor, Asian Journal of English Language Teaching. So, um, uh, especially if you are in Uzbekistan, right? And want to publish your book reviews, maybe you want to contact Asian Journal of English Language Teaching because they will have books specifically catered towards um, colleagues, English language teaching professionals who are working in Asia, right? So, Australian Review of Applied Linguistics. This is also a good journal. Uh, bilingualism. So if you're interested in cognition, bilingualism, so maybe you want to contact this journal book review editor and ask them, you know, whether you can uh, publish a book review or maybe if, you, if there is a book that has recently been published, maybe you want to send the link uh, of that book to the book review editor and ask whether you can publish it. Okay, so this is a great list. And Calico Journal, if you're interested in technology, so this is the type of journal you want to publish your book reviews, okay? So please please take a look at it. So there are lots and lots of journals. And so there are lots and lots of journals and you can publish them. So uh, your book reviews in them. So if you're um, in Uzbekistan, so take a look at it, right? What kind of journals are there? Maybe VAC, right? This um, was like Ministry of Education, right? I'm, I'm blanking on the real name, uh, the real title of this organization. Maybe VAC has journals that also publish book reviews. Right, I know that um, I think um, Elena Volkova has a journal designed for teachers, right? Maybe um, that journal has a book review section. So you have to be proactive and, and look for the um, uh, journals um, and also find your books, right? Okay, Naomi, welcome. So, okay, how to write book reviews, 
Now, let you know, let me talk about it. Now, here's the thing. Oh, sorry. So here's the thing. Uh, okay, how to write book reviews. So, uh, please note, most journals have guidelines and they vary. Okay, so you, what you see here is like two boxes, right? This is um, uh, information to the authors from the ELT journal, while this one is an information to the authors from the language learning and technology journal, right? Remember, right, I told you that, um, you know, most journals in TESOL and applied linguistics uh, invite uh, uh, authors to publish their book review, right? So now what ELT journal says, unsolicited reviews cannot be accepted for publication. What this basically means is that journal review, um, so journal review editors, right? Journal review editors first have to approve your book before you start working on your book review for the journal. Okay. So in other words, let's say, let's say I bought this book. Right, and I want to review it for ELT Journal. When I write a book review, okay, and if I want to submit it to ELT Journal, they might not accept it. Why? Because it's unsolicited. Okay, they didn't ask me to do that. Okay, so that's why you have to reach out to the book review editor of the journal and ask them whether you can review this book or not. Or maybe they have something in mind. Okay, so if you're interested in writing a review for ELT Journal, please contact the reviews editor at the address given in the journal or on our website. So that's now let's go to the language learning and technology. As you can see, uh, the book review editor for the language learning and technology is Ruslan Tsvorov, Professor Dr. Ruslan Tsvorov, right? And so you have to reach out to him and ask him, okay, whether you can uh, write a book review or if you have a book in mind, then you can send the link. Now, okay, good. Now, how to write book reviews, right? In book reviews, right? You, first, when you write a review, first of all, let me just start from here. Book review lengths may vary from 600 words to 1,000 words. They're very short. Book reviews are very short. We know, right? Articles are very long. Like, for example, you know, the last article that I submitted had uh, 6,500 words. The one before had 8,500 words, right? These are the limits for general articles, uh, research-based articles, right? While book reviews are short, from 600 to 1,000 words. Now. What, you, what basically um, you need to do when you write book reviews is that you need to provide general information about the book, right? What is this book about, right? Who is it for? What kind of sections does it have, right? How many chapters? What kind of information that it offers? Also, as a book review editor, you need to write evaluative comments in your book review, right? In other words, you have to say, hey, I really like this book for the following reasons, right? And you know the chap information in so and so chapter gave lots of insights about let's say how to teach vocabulary, but also you have to find the right balance between praise and constructive criticism. Remember, I mean I'm coming from the culture where uh, sometimes we are we are we are not taught how to give critique. Okay, or we we get really emotional or we get really um, uh, anyway. So we were not taught how to do that. So it can be a little bit hard to do that, but you have to give at least one. Um, constructive criticism, okay? And basically you, you talk about the weakness of the app or the book that you read uh, or the website or the YouTube channel and just indicate how the author or the authors of the book um, could um, revise it in the future, okay? So give constructive criticism. And I, I remember one time um, I wanted to, okay, I think most of you know that I love vocabulary, okay? Uh, for me, there is no right or wrong way to teach vocabulary. All the ways are right of it. So one time I was asked to write a book review for the ELT journal. It was Macmillan Collocations Dictionary. I loved the book. I enjoyed reading it. Oh, it was a great resource. So I wrote my book review and submitted it to the ELT journal. And the book review editor from the ELT journal got back to me and said, hey, all of your reviews or the words you said about the project is positive. You know, say something negative as well and give you constructive criticism, right? So I was asked explicitly, to, to include one constructive criticism because that's what review is about, right? We know that we are living probably in a perfect world, but not everything is perfect. And um, I will, um, this is, this is um, 
this is a, an example from a, a, a paper that I will share with you later. It's written by Lewis, actually published 2020. So when I was preparing for this presentation, um, and I basically Googled, right? Hey, Professor Google, how can I write book reviews? Do you have any information? And the Professor Google gave me the first option was a Lewis, um, Maryland Lewis, yeah, 2020, published in RELC Journal. RELC Journal is a Singapore-based journal, very prestigious journal in the field of TESOL and applied linguistics. So what, what Lewis 2020 did, she talked about how we can publish our book reviews. On top of that, she actually uh, attached an appendix um, giving us guidelines, paragraph by paragraph, how we can write a book review, okay? So uh, if you wanna see the book review analysis, you can click here and, and, and see the, the whole book review analysis. As you can see, right? So this is paragraph, right? This paragraph has uh, you know, the two functions, give an example of, of the strength of the book, it contrasts this book with other similar titles that were published, right? Now let's look at the second paragraph, continue with a further strength and illustrate the point, right? Paragraph number three, mention the book's effect on the reader. So as you can see, each paragraph in the book review has a purpose, right? So please go through this, okay? Um, after, when the webinar is over, right? Go through this analysis and, and, and see, uh, you know, how the book review was organized. And I think the best way to publish a book review is to read the book reviews that have already been published. I, th I think that's the best way, okay? I was actually working with the uh, TESOL editor and, uh, and, and I said, you know what? My English is my second language. And so I still have to you know, brush upon my academic writing. And so you gave me lots of useful comments. So what would you suggest me to do? Like, you know, what, what do you think? What's the best way to improve my academic writing? And she, she said that the best way to do that would be to read um, the, the researchers that you follow and analyze their paragraphs, uh, you know, analyze their writing paragraph by paragraph and look at their structure, look at the wording. And that's how you can actually improve your writing. And I think that was one of the best suggestions. I mean, it takes a lot of time, uh, but at the end of the day, I think it pays off. And so these are some of the suggestions from, um, uh, from Lewis 2020, right? So you know, the, the, there'll be some implicit criticism. Do you remember I told you like, yes, your review can have more positive than negative so criticisms, but your book review or app review, website review, should have some sort of criticism or constructive criticism. So this is some of the formulaic language that you can use, right? If the publishers were considering a reprint of this book, one change could be, right? And let's note, right? Usually when you publish a book, right? The books have first edition, second edition, and third edition, and you would see improvement, right? In, in most cases, you would see improvement, right? So second edition is better than the first edition. Third edition is better than the right second edition. I mean, why? It's based on the, um, constructive criticism, suggestions from the book reviewers or the editors or the readers, right? So that, that's what happens. So that's why um, if you wanna write your uh, book reviews, please take a look at Louis's article. I will share it with you the link. Uh, also um, review the already published article, right? Try analyzing book reviews in recent journals, right? So that's the best way. So these are some of the papers, uh, the book reviews that I, I would encourage you to look at first. Like, Joe Bastian, as a former student, MA TESOL student from uh, Northeastern Illinois University TESOL program. So he published a book review in TESOL journal and review of 21st century communication, listening, speaking, and critical thinking, student book. Uh, and this guy, I don't know who this guy is, very long last name. Um, so this guy, for example, right? I published a review of Macmillan Collocation Dictionary in the ELT journal. So take a look at it, okay? And Qureshi, uh, my friend, who is a professor right now uh, at uh, University in United Arab Emirates, I'm blanking on the name. So he, for example, published a, a vocabulary book by D. Gardner, uh, exploring vocabulary language in action in the prestigious TESOL journal, uh, TESOL quarterly. So take a look at how he organized his book reviews and York. As you can see, like, for example, the interesting thing is that I think this book on gaming uh, was published, I think, in 2020. And York, the author who is interested in gaming, he published a book review of the book in 2020. So please take a look at the examples and analyze them paragraph by paragraph. I, mean, I think that's, that's a great way to learn on how to write a book review. Now, if you're in Uzbekistan, okay, my colleagues in Uzbekistan, Hamkaslar, Hamkaslar means colleagues. So, Hamkaslar, so if you're in Uzbekistan, 
So I want to read some of the reviews of these books. Okay, I know that um, uh, Ustaz Shavkat Botayev and his colleagues published this book, uh, dictionary, English, Uzbek, Uzbek, English dictionary. I don't have a copy, but next time when I go to Uzbekistan, I want to buy it. But before I buy this book, you know, whether it costs $10, $20, $50, $100, I want to read a review. I want to know what this book is about, right? So, and so maybe someone can publish uh, a review of this dictionary and publish it in Asian EFL journal, right? Maybe the, our um, Uzbek, Vatan Doshla, Mullah Doshla in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, maybe they wanna, uh, you know, they will find out about this book and maybe they will purchase this book, right? Or maybe you want to publish this book in International Journal of uh, Lexicography, which is a prestigious journal by Oxford University Press. Because please note that Uzbek is taught in um, the United States, University of Chicago, right? 40 minutes from there, from here, they have they offer Uzbek courses. University of um, Indiana Bloomington, they have Uzbek courses. Arizona State University, where Dr. Sadat Adilova teaches. Uh, they offer Uzbek courses. Ohio, right? University of Maryland, I mean, they have uh, language programs where they offer Uzbek courses or people like myself. I mean, um, you know, even though I'm a professor, I always have to brush upon my language skills because as Dr. Pro Dr. Frederick Costola said, once you're a learner, you're always a learner. So, you know, I have to look up the words and, and things. Oh, we have uh, Uzbek American Association of Chicago here where we have a library, we have people uh, who want to learn English or improve their Uzbek, right? They will need it. I personally want to buy it, right? But before we purchase it, we need to know what this book is about. So maybe you want to review this, and and please let me know if you need help. Or this teens book, um, you know, I've 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 seen Svetlana Khan this name a lot, and and the British Council, it, they usually use it interchangeably. Svetlana Khan, British Council, British Council, Svetlana Khan. So for example, I've seen a lot of books by her, but I've never seen reviews of her books and 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 and, and her co-authors. Maybe. This book can also be used in schools in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, right, uh, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, or maybe even the United States. Maybe it's an awesome book, but people need to know, right, what this book is about and who is it for, right? And maybe the teachers who are teaching at school, maybe you can, if you have used this book, write a review for this book and publish it in local journals, VAT index journal. Scopus index journals, right? Because people would be interested. I would be interested in reading a review of these and find out what they have incorporated, right? Or this one, right? If, if you follow Mentor Hub, somebody for, um, actually sent out the, the cornerstone, a step to IELTS. I mean, I'm actually teaching IELTS, um, you know, to my nephews. And I know Akimal Akbarov, a colleague who has been teaching IELTS to students, and also Charles Ushara, he was the Tashkia Medical Academy, right? He's been teaching IELTS to his students, you know, maybe, uh, it's, I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know what happened, sorry, a technical glitch, right? Maybe, right, maybe, uh, you know, they want to know about this Cornerstone book, right? So that's why, and especially if it's a new book, we know, right? New books are exciting, but also we know that new books may have pitfalls, right? Flaws, right? Or room for improvement, right? So that's why, uh, you know, uh, you need to write uh, book reviews. First of all, you want to inform other colleagues what these books are about. Second of all, you want to give your suggestions to authors. Right? Authors can be uh, the, 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 the vice president at university. Authors might have 40 plus year experience in teaching. At the end of the day, we are humans, we make mistakes, and we have to let them know how they can improve their product, okay? And if you're in the United States, my um, TESOL 409 students, and also colleagues, or anybody else who's following us, um, just um, you know, look at the look at the look at the uh, list of journals, right? Look at the uh, uh, list of books that were recently published, right? Two or one year old, okay? And 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 see, you know, what you can do. For example, uh, Joe Bastian, right? Published in published in TESOL journal because in in language assessment course, uh, book review or material review was an assigned project. So he just didn't Joe didn't just um, wrote his review and submitted as a course paper and stopped there. He actually made further revisions and submitted to the TESOL journal and that paper was published, okay? Or Janine Coughlin, right? Published in ITV newsletter, the same thing, right? So 
So she liked the book and probably it was also a science project in one of her courses in the program. And she actually um, uh, uh, published it as a coursework. And later that, that got, um, got published in the ITB newsletter, okay? So these are some of the ways you can do it. And also always, right? If you wanna publish something um, and you're excited about it and take a look at this webinar, take a look at the resources that I uploaded or let me know, email me and I'd be very happy to um, guide you. As Dr. Randall Sadler guided me in 2004, it's, it's a payback. So now these are some of the useful references and handouts. So um, please take a look at this article. I told you, right, when I Googled it, this popped up. And um, if, if Marilyn Lewis is watching this webinar, thank you so much for publishing such a wonderful, informative and, and reader-friendly um, uh, article on how to write a book review in Tassel and Applied Linguistics. And these are some of the uh, useful resources. Please take a look at them, okay? They, they generally talk about how to, you can publish your academic articles and academic journals. So I also put together these uh, popular journals, right, in TESOL Applied Linguistics. Uh, take a look at it. I showed it to you briefly. This, this contains a list of uh, journals uh, popular in TESOL and Applied Linguistics in general. And also look at the list of the publishers, okay? They are here. Okay, so um, right now it's a uh, time for a question and an answer. Uh, I hope that I addressed many, uh, many of your questions. If not, then I want to look at the uh, Zoom chat box and answer your questions one by one. But just before I answer your questions one by one, just to let you know, uh, this webinar will be uh, available at Mentor Hub's YouTube channel. That is a YouTube channel. And so you can follow um, uh, Mentor Hub's uh, presentations because they give wonderful, wonderful webinars that can be useful, not only teachers in Uzbekistan. I myself benefited a lot from the videos from uh, the Mentor Hubs. For example, I'm currently using um, Google Classroom with my TESOL 409 students, and I learned about Google Classroom from Mentor Hub, you know, so, and also from colleagues uh, from uh, also who gave presentations in Mentor Hub. Uh, Emilio, uh, who is a, a teacher in Chicago, gave a talk in Mentor Hub. And also for PowerPoint slides, book review samples, and additional readings, please check my Google Drive, okay? So all the information is available here. It's tinyurl slash book review in TESOL. Okay, so now Drupa. So that's the main part and how we can uh, answer their questions. Do you want me to check the uh, discussion post? Uh, the, the chat um, box? Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, um, yeah, I shared the link to the, uh -huh. uh, both the video the, and uh, the the drive the google drive link that you shared yeah uh, we don't have any questions so far so okay. yeah if you have any questions now we can, yeah uh -huh. if you have any if questions you, please let me know if you want to um see the questions easier you can stop sharing your screen oh okay sounds good yeah that yeah. way it's oh, easier to that, see the chat much box better. Sounds yeah, <laughs> somehow it works better. Good, good, good. I like mm -hmm. it here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Where can I get the video? So, okay, yeah. Adetutu um, Pabusoro, if I'm pronouncing correctly. Yes. Uh, uh, let me just let me just send you the link. Mm -hmm. So I think Nodrapal Paul already shared yes. it. Yes, I did. You know. Yeah, but you can okay, share good. it once again. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Okay, it was wonderful. Thank you, Nazi. Uh -huh. Naima. Okay, thank you, Naima. Wonderful webinar. Hassan, Ahmad Janaf, thank you. Sarah, yeah, thanks for coming. I'm happy to, you know, you found the uh, resources helpful. Uh, okay. Good. Yeah, if you guys don't have any questions, maybe we can call it a, I don't know, a day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I think it was really informative. Yeah, and uh -huh. uh, I hope people were motivated now uh, to do this. Yes, I personally am. And I already have, yes, yeah, uh, Olivia <laughs> was sharing like a couple of uh, books that um, I would like to review or I would like somebody else recommend uh -huh. to review it. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Just a second. Naomi, Naomi has a question. So, Naomi, just to let you know, um, the books, I think you can get the books from the publisher, right? So, you know, I actually uh, gave a link that has a list of publishers. 
and and it, please note, right? Like Oxford University Press, right? It's a huge um, publishing house, right? Oxford, Cambridge, Macmillan, right? They also publish politics, um, you know, chemistry, you know, genome, right? Physics, right? But they most of the major publishing companies have um, ELT section or linguistic section, so you can learn about the newly published books, um, you know, from the ELT. Uh, sections of these journals. Another way to do that would be, once you find the ELT sections of the journals, you can actually subscribe to them. Okay, you just enter your email, and and every time they have new um, uh, publications, they usually uh, send out a newsletter in the form of a newsletter, and they let you know about their new title. Okay, so that's that's one way you can learn about uh, uh, the, the the new book, and and some other time you know, going to conferences, right? I mean, this is not happening nowadays. Usually in the TESOL conference, right? Whether it's Canada TESOL or US TESOL, right? Usually they have big booths, right? Huge booths, booths with all the publishers, right? Who come and they usually advertise their new title. So that, that's the way you can actually publish, um, get to know about the new title. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are okay, lots of then. comments saying, thanking you yeah. and on our oh, YouTube you channel so as well. Yeah, saying it was very informative. Yeah, thank Sounds you so good. much. Yeah, thank you, Nodropa, and thanks for everybody who joined us, and thanks for TESOL for our nice students as well. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Yes, bye. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah, okay. Nodropa, talk to you later.